of others that have this really strong notion of time where I can query the database as of a point in time. Yeah, another, another famous one is Git. Yes, very famous <laughs> database. I was say, yeah. exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Rich made that very point. He says, you know, when we as software engineers make tools for ourselves, we bake in time as a first class concern because it's super important. When we make it for the accounting department, we're just like, ah, whatever, you get current state, that's all you get. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes. Um, that is exactly the mental model <laughs> chief, and that's exactly the, has been the problem, at least from my experience. That's right, that's right. So the, the idea of Datomic was to have this strongly time-oriented notion of, of a data store. It pairs really great, that type of a data store, the data store with that quality, pairs really, really great with event modeling, because event modeling, you have this strong notion of causal time. You've got this logical clock that represents the arrival of each event, right? When, when that event is recorded to the event log, represents a tick of a clock. And now in my read model, when I build in something like Datomic, I can query the point in time, you know, when this event arrived. So I can, I can correlate strongly my, my consistency of my reads of a read model with a causal tick of the clock of when a particular event arrives. So I can do all kinds of time and processing and, and querying of a database as of event E and event E plus one and E plus two and E plus three are arriving, but I don't care because I just want to know what the database looked like at the time this event arrived. So then uh, to, to answer Darren's question again, um, if you're just looking to do some querying or to do some um, uh, you know, joining and, and you know, kind of uh, read model stuff, and you want to have some notion of time, you don't even need to replay your events or bother with any of that stuff. You can just query at the database that has this time notion built in and get a really consistent view of what the, the state of the system was at some point in the past. So th those techniques marry really, really well, event modeling and event sourcing, where you have a strong notion of business domain level event time, that couples really well with a database that has a notion of time so that you can have read models that are consistent as of each event. Does that make sense? That was like another rant. Yeah, yeah some no. really good, good ideas for me to think about. Thanks, guys. I had a question for Bobby. I wanted to, uh, I had, I had, I've seen updates to uh, uh, floating past my inbox, but this week is only a four day week and I've had 16 hour days, so not very much time uh, to do anything else. So uh, is there a set of like updates you want to notify us about what you've done uh, in O-Note? Sure. Cause uh, you know, I'm still, um, I have my wish list, <laughs> which is cool. Yes, which is, which is very long. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm curious as to what's uh, what's going on. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, thank you for asking. Good, good question. Um, right now, my my whole world is collaboration. So we released um, JSON export import and PDF export. So all of that's live on onote.com. So you can export the picture as a PDF, or you can export the data as a JSON import. Uh, data that you export in one browser over into another browser or email to a colleague or whatever and you can import uh, those files. So using that you can kind of patch together sort of a poor man's collaboration system. It's not great, but it, but it works. Um, so in the, uh, yeah, thank you, Cash. Cash just dropped a link to, uh, to Onote if you haven't checked it out yet in the time tracking uh, Slack. So having, you know, gotten those features done and out of the way, uh, I've just been focused purely on collaboration. It's a hard problem. Um, we're like I'm building a CRDT from scratch, you know, like you do, uh, because <laughs> I have to uh, I have to have this collaborative data structure that maintains its own historical record inside of itself. Um, the CRDT I'm using is actually very strongly analogous to event sourcing. It's really cool. Um, it's based on a paper by Martin Kleppman, uh, which I'll drop a link to here in a second. Uh, but I'm building a CRDT so that at collaboration time, people can make local changes in their own browser, and then those changes, which are partially ordered, totally partially ordered, um, can get conveyed to everyone, every participant, be um, merged together in a totally ordered way, and then uh, everyone can, can uh, rebuild their state, and that state is always converging, so we always... Um, it's kind of like uh, Google Docs work, you know, with collaborative editing, right? Very much like Google Docs. Google Docs uses a different technique called Operational yeah. Transform that requires a server in the loop. Yeah. We don't require a server. This is pure peer-to-peer -peer stuff. And as peers make changes, 
they gossip those changes around and everyone that's seen the same set of changes is guaranteed to have the same event model document in front of them. So that's kind of what so I'm working on. It's even better on. because it's decentralized. Decentralized, purely peer to peer. Yep, no server in the mix. We do use a server just to maintain the state of who's on the collaboration, but none of the event model data goes across that server. Yeah, that's very cool. Yep. So that's awesome. So how, um, I don't want to put a time pressure on it, but uh, <laughs> when can we see it? <laughs> uh, yeah, tomorrow. No. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> it's not going to sleep. It's going to 72 hours in the next 24. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so the goal of that is, um, is to have this done sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, I put the high end of that at sort of, three to four weeks. Um, really, you know, I'm sort of finishing up the CRDT piece of it now, and then I'm gonna inc incorporate that technology into what we've already built in the product. But like in the product today, we already have a signaling service and like the ability to start calls and add people to the calls and all that stuff. It's just behind a feature flag because it's not useful yet. But uh, integrating the CRDT state management um, strategy with the uh, signaling stuff that's already in place, we should have a working collaboration system soon. So that's and, the, uh, and the abstraction you're using underneath is, is um, very similar to event sourcing, you said. Very similar to event sourcing. So the uh, so like I added an event or I connected this command to this event. They're literally those, uh, those are the things you're coordinating. Those are the things, yep. And we store them in, in, in CRDT world in this uh, paper that Martin Kleppman wrote. Uh, he calls those operations but they're indistinguishable from events. From yeah, yeah, I know. He he has a kind of an allergic reaction to the CKRS word and all that. I did an interview with him uh, a couple of years ago, which is kind of yeah. funny because yeah. I'll post the link to the interview. Um, uh, he, he definitely wants to, I think because he has PhD in, in CRDTs, he didn't want to say that he overheard anything <laughs> outside of his own world so he could finish uh, his research without saying that these are the resources from Greg Young or whatever, right? right. And I right. think he also has an allergic reaction to a lot of consultants in the uh, DDD world and all that kind of stuff. He's uh, very academic. Yes. Non-business, right? Yeah, yeah, he is <laughs> so, definitely an academic uh, persuasion. He, yeah. he was an original uh, kind of uh, in the mix at Confluent really early on, you know, yeah. a top contributor. Um, one of his papers or one of his articles, um, turning the database inside out with Apache Samza, yeah, uh, what sent me down this current uh, event modeling course. Uh, it made me realize like, oh, the stuff I was doing on Datomic, that has a name, it's event sourcing and the secure, you know, so that it, it was sort of ironic. In yeah, you have to find it yourself by finding, wait a second, I'm reading the same thing that he talked about. Why didn't, why didn't he just say CQRS? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. really weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so um, the ideas are very similar. They're very adjacent, but we call them by different names because scholarship yeah. academic world versus business world. but um, the, CRD, the CRDT that I'm building um, is based on one of his papers, and it's basically event sourcing. There's a few little kind of mathy techniques that allow you to take a partial ordering based on Lamport timestamps and, and Lamport clocks and arrive at a total ordering. You're kind of a pack sauce, right? What's that? Are Lamport clocks related to pack sauce? So Lamport timestamps are, uh, are, are older. They predate yeah. uh, pack sauce, but basically every distributed concept Every distributed systems concept since Lamport wrote the paper. Uh, How do they relate to vector clocks? That, that's they... what a vector clock is. So like, oh, right. That's what I thought. Okay, I'm thinking, of, why am I thinking about this twice yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. So people, people call them vector clocks. If, right, right, right. right. Okay. Want to give credit to, to Lamport for his paper. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the, uh, being able to, to arrive at a total ordering from a partial ordering in a set of operations, that's like the, the crux of this paper, it's, you know. All kinds of math stuff that I don't super understand because, like, you know, I'm not I'm not that good at math. But um, was able to you know cobble together enough understanding to implement this paper, and uh, and it's basically exactly that. It's you record a set of operations. That's your event source. You interpret that set of operations into a read model, and that's your current state of the of the data structure. So I've got events and read models, and that's kind of the core of this CRDT library. It's it's really interesting how that arrives. I'm building the command part of that now. That's kind of what I, what I'm working on. Uh, right now so that it's usable from a programming language instead of having to hand build these operations out of data. Um, and then once I'm done with that, um, I'll have the, the raw materials necessary to, to have a working collaboration system. So look forward to that. We'll probably send some emails out to the user base um, when those things drop. Um, I will put a caveat. Um, there probably will be payment involved to initiate 
a uh, uh, collaboration. So we, we may have, we may require, we're, we're still figuring this out. We're trying to build a business around this thing, right? But um, we may- As long as you give me some promo codes to hand out to people. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have plenty <laughs> of promo codes for this group for sure. Uh, but the idea is uh, uh, only paying users will be able to initiate a collaboration, but anyone, free users uh, in any number will be able to join collaborations. So at Max, you'll have to have you know, one person per event modeling session that has a paid account and everyone else can, uh, can uh, yeah. collaborate there. So we want to make sure we're, we're being fair and, you know, being, being careful and, and balancing. Just for them. those people that are curious about um, vector clocks and CRDTs and uh, the, the academic side of CKRS, I posted a link to the interview with, uh, uh, with uh, Martin Klepman that I did a couple of years ago. I think it was a couple of years. Oh, no, wow, it's already getting to be three years ago. Oh, man, time flies. <laughs> but it's in there if you're, if you're curious about uh, what makes this man tick. Uh, it's about an hour long, I think. Um, yeah, just above an hour. So hopefully you'll find that interesting. So it, w let's fast forward. You have collaboration done. Um, what's the next piece? So collaboration is sort of the key feature during design. Our goal for O-Note is to make it a platform that covers design, implementation, and operations, kind of the full software development lifecycle. Um, so collaboration is the killer feature during design, we think. Um, by building collaboration and building the CRDT, we'll have, the, um, we'll have laid the groundwork for our repository service, which will be very much like GitHub. Everything right now is just locally stored in your browser. Um, the repository will, will give you the, 